have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Mystery Express is an old game from Days of Wonder. Now, Days of Wonder is one of the best companies that makes games. They used to bring out a game every so often, but when it came out, it was a big to-do. It's a Days of Wonder game. You knew you were getting great components, great gameplay, simplistic gameplay that was good for a family. And they've been bought out by another company, and with still to see if that quality is going to be keeping up, but they have a great reputation. And this is like when this game came out when Days of Wonder was really hot. Um, and to me, it's a clue killer. It's a game that Koa takes clue, puts it on the on the on the back burner, and you never need to play it again. I like this that much better. So what you're doing on this one, it feels like you're taking the ticket to ride and coming inside the train, and there's a murder going on, and you're trying to figure out who, when, what, where, and how, right, uh, of it. And in this game, you're not necessarily going to guess at all. You know, it's who can who can figure out the most stuff in most cases. Um, it's a very neat game. You kind of need to get a couple rounds of it going to kind of feel the flow and what's going on. I don't feel like you're going to jump right in and be like, ah, yeah, I got this. But I've played with people who haven't played a lot of board games who were fans of Clue. And they still kind of like the simplistic nature of Clue. And it was better for their family. They felt like this was a little bit more complicated. Um, perhaps. Uh, there are cards going around. There's a bit more deduction you're going to have to do. And you have to kind of think about what you're going to do. How do I get that extra location so I can narrow something down? The time aspect of this is really hard, okay? And it's, it's just tremendously difficult. And a lot of times the time is something we don't give. So I'm going to set time aside. Uh, the components are fantastic and look great. Days of Wonder knocked out of the park. I feel like the board makes sense. I like the places that you can do on it. I think the actions you do on it are fairly um, clear, concise, and you know what you're doing. The only thing we had a problem with was the one hour one where you're kind of passing one to the left and one to the right, and then it goes around the table and everybody does that. It was a little bit confusing of when and where and how, and I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I wouldn't put a 1000 bucks down saying I, I did it 100% right, but we did the best that we could. I looked online, and based on what other people are saying, I, I, I'm pretty confident we're doing it right. Uh, but if somebody came in and said, nope, you tweak it just a bit and this is how you do it, I'd be like, okay. Um, Minor quibble, though. But the essence of the game of trying to figure it out, I really feel like that I'm trying to figure out this murder. I really feel like I'm trying to outsmart the people that I'm with because what card do you give to this person? You know that person's not going to get to see. How many modus operandi cards do they have in their hand? So I don't want to give them that information. So it works out very, very well for me. Um, overall, this is a very solid to great game. This is what I'm going to keep in my collection for a very long time because it is the whodunit game to me. If you have played Clue and you're ready to jump into something a little bit deeper, this is the game I bring to you. This is the game they say, oh, I really like Clue. Then I got a game for you. Let's try Mystery Express. And that's how I ended up getting this one back to the table. Um, I, I need to play the Abbey game from Days of Wonder and kind of see how that compares. I haven't played that one as much. But this is the one to me that I've been able to jump in and really, really play. I like how the cards are hidden. I like how you discard the cards. You can make people pick them up. And I think that strategic element is, is hidden in this game. The idea, when people first play this, at least the people I've played with, they don't want to spend the hour making people pick up their cards. They don't see the usefulness in that. But that can throw things into chaos. If I know what you have and nobody else knows, I can leave it down and nobody can see it. But if people are starting to... If, if I know I'm going to make people show cards, why well, want you to pick up your cards? And I want you to show a card I already know because you're not giving out any more information to the other people if they already know it. So that whole kind of thing is going on here. And I really, really, really like that. And I feel like as the train moves closer to our destination, that time is becoming scarce. And i got to find out some things. And, I, and when the passengers come on, I'm like, okay, here's some new information. we got to get this through. And little by little, you start feeling this, figuring this out. But you're, I don't think, I don't know. I've never played with anybody who's able to nail it all. I've seen people get four of the five. 
that's the most. And, and I, I think that's great about this game because there's never that point where you, if you figure it all out and just kind of playing through the rest of the game. But in this game, even if that happened, which I've never seen it happen, you would still be diverting. And diverting the attention away from things can be very, very important in this game. And I don't think you get there in, in your first few plays. you got to play this game a few times to feel comfortable with the information, how to get that information, to be able to use your cards or use other people's cards to divert information and trip people up. That can be hugely important in this game. And it takes a few plays to get there. So there is some deepness to this, even though it's a simplistic game, really, right? We've all played Clue. We know that we have to find out who did it. So wonderful game. I really like this game. If you want a whodunit, this is the game to play. This is the game to find out with somebody. If you want to get somebody to gaming and they've played Clue and they're looking to go to the next level, this is the game, people. This is the one to play. So Mystery Express, as they call it, the whodunit on rails. This is the one you want to get. This is the one you want to play, and this is the one you want to keep. So here's Mystery Express, the old Days of Wonder clue killer, if you will. And it's kind of funny, this is like, in my mind, still in the Ticket to Ride universe. So these are the people that will be riding the train when we're playing Ticket to Ride. Uh, beautiful box art, beautiful game. This has not come with it. That is just extra stuff that I've printed out. Uh, here's what came in my copy. You get these little tickets where you'll be using this to cover. And it has what the rooms all do and you would write inside of it. You're going to put a little piece of paper on it. But it kind of gives you an overview. And it has a special power for each of the players. You're going to get a usual good rule book from Days of Thunder or Days of Wonder. This is a little bit of a hard game to conceptualize, in my mind at least, of what you're doing. And it might take a couple rounds just to kind of get the hang of it. You're gonna get a roll, you're gonna get a board, which I'll come back to. You're gonna get a beautiful, beautiful insert here. So let me go through some of the components. You're gonna have this beautiful whistle that will be used as the first player marker. The train, which will be moving across the board. And you're gonna get this little luggage pouch, which sometimes you'll be playing with. Which hand is it in? And you have to guess which hand that's in. Uh, these are some beautiful piece markers that you'll be moving. These are these busts of the characters that you are. But very, very, very cool looking. And there's five of those and the conductor. You're going to get a number of chits that will be used. To signify which person you are and if you use your special power for the round. A few of these will go out on the board. These are really thick, thick components. You get a number of cards. You're going to have some clock cards that will be used. Fairly good. And then you're going to have some with different bags. Location, suspect, modus operandi, motive, and location. The other side of these, you'll see the people that it could be. Uh, motive is unknown, or smoke. They were in the smoking car was because of money or despair. Maybe they clubbed them or poisoned them. You know, all your clue-esque things. And you're gonna have enough of these for each of the players that I showed you already. And you're gonna get a bunch of score sheets and telegrams that will be used. Whew, that's a lot. Um, throughout the game. Let me show you what the board looks like. So you're gonna get a long skinny board. You're gonna be, this is the route that you'll be taking with the cities and kind of some icons about what you do. This at the top will be where you'll be taking the actions and these icons will make sense as I teach you the game. And these are just kind of places for some cards that will be played on the board. But it's a fairly long board versus you know your normal thick square board. All the components are really good. You know, Days of Thunder always, or <laughs> Days of Thunder, Days of Wonder always puts out really good components, um, and this one does not let us down in the least. The rules for Mystery, Mystery Express are mixed bag for me. I feel like overall the rules are good, and I can see why they had some problems with this rule book. Because where do you start and what do you explain first? Okay, I'll put that aside. Cause I don't know. If there's a winning combination. It may just be your style. Do you want to know what the places do first or what the stops do? Okay. But one of the problems I did have is with the one hour spot, and I alluded to this earlier in the review, 
of how you take care of that. And when I went online, I think a lot of people had problems with that. I don't think it was entirely clear. Okay, so I'm gonna get a car, give a car to this guy, and and get a car from this guy and give one to this guy. So this guy goes next. And I wasn't entirely clear if m more than one person goes, because if he gives a car back to the first person, then that first person would go again from a from what I understand the reading of the rules, but we played it as everybody went once. I don't know. I'm, I went online, it seems to be how you do it, but I'm not sure the rule book. So there's some ambiguity sometimes in the rules. I don't think it matters as long as you're having fun, right? That's what games are for. So in a game like this where we're just trying to get information, I guess it doesn't really matter how you play it. Um, more information makes the game easier. Less information makes it harder. So how do you want to play it? Do you want more information or less information? Are you okay with one person getting more information than everybody else? It's, it's going to happen in this game. Other than that, the rulebook is okay. I mean, I had some minor quibbles with it. I had some problems with it. You will be able to you will be able to play the game with the rules. Just, just say it there. But there will be some instances where it's, you're just a little bit unclear how to go. You can rationalize it in your head and kind of figure it out. But I like it when the book tells me rather than myself having to make up rules as I go. So as you're playing the game, this train will be moving and signifying the rounds of the game. Let me kind of zoom in here and show you what it looks like. So if we were here and we were moving through here, we know that we would have five hours to spend on a round. When we come into a city, there may be some icons that tell us what we do. In this case, we'll be sending off our telegrams, i.e. guessing of what the outcome may be for the game. Like here, uh, some more people come out, uh, some more cards, and once we pass that, we can use five hours. So that's kind of how the game will progress. So let's take a look at what we're doing up here. For the most part, each spot here will give you a different action that you can do. What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out who, what, where, when, how. So we will have the time, which I'll show you how that works in a second. And we will be figuring out the location of where it happened, the suspect, modus operandi, the mode of, and lastly, the location. And you'll be doing this because you have these cards that people will have. And one of each card will be out of the game. So there'll be one suspect out of the game, one motive out of the game. There'll be one location out. So each of these cards has two to the set. So there's two Dr. Rajivs. If you can d deduct by looking at people's cards, if there's only one of these in the game, then you know that that must be the card, and this is who who did it. Same thing. If you know there's only one smoking car in the game, then you know it had to have happened in the smoking car. So you'll be using deduction, kind of. It's very clue-esque to figure out how that happens. And everybody will start out with a number of cards in their hand. And one important note is that if somebody looks at a card or you look at a card from somebody, it gets discarded for the round into your discard pile. And that will reduce the amount of cards that you have in your hand. So how can you figure out what these cards are that other people have? So this first section, it costs one hour. Keep in mind when you go through each leg of the trip, you have a different number of hours you can do. And the way the game works is, let's say red is first. Red will perform all of his actions spend his time before blue goes. It's very ambiguous in the rules. So red will take all of his actions, then blue will take all of his actions, and then green, whatever the turn order may be. So let me show you how this works. So if you were to go here, you would spend one hour. And what that means is the player is going to give one card, or look at one card from the person on his right, and give a card to the person on his left. And that will kind of shift the cards around in a circle Everybody will get a look at a card. Remember, when you look at a card, once again, it gets discarded down. So it's reducing the number in your hand. If you happen to go here, what will happen is somebody will put this luggage out of sight in one of their hands. You will choose which hand it is. If you choose wrong, you only spent one hour, but you don't get to look at a card. If you are correct, you spent two hours, and you get to look at one of their cards of your choice. If you were to go here, you get to choose... Each player has to show you a card a different type. So if you ask somebody for a location card, you cannot ask another player for a location card. That's a dining card. At the two hour spot, um, everybody has to show you a card of a certain type. So you might say location, 
and everybody has to show you a location card in their hand and that will be face up for everyone to see if you go um, and that, that'll help you kind of deduct what's going on here at the three hour spot you're going to ask each player to give you a card of a certain type that card now goes in your own discard pile after that's done you give a card to each of the players of any type that you want the last one is you can add, cause now remember you're discarding cards as time goes and there aren't any cards in your hand for one hour you can make a person pick up all of their discard you may do this because you want to see what's in their discard pile or you already know what's there and you don't want people to see what's in their hand and you want those picked up um, and then the last spot, which is available sometimes, is that once you pass certain parts of the game, here and here, these two decks, which will have cards, will become available. These represent passengers getting on. So at this point, you can go through these decks and pick up a card, look at it, and put it in your own discard pile. Now the only thing is that this conductor will be moving around the board each round. If you happen to activate the spot that his he is in, you will be able to look at the three conductor cards. So these, these may be cards that are sitting here that nobody has looked at yet. Now this is a free action if you go where the conductor is at. You can then look at this card, put it in your discard pile, right? And then you can put another card down there from your hand. And as the game progresses, it's become more and more important. So that's kind of what the conductor does. And each time you do this, let me show you one of mine, and, and you can, write this down well this wasn't mine but another player but you can start taking notes about what you see who had that card where was it at um, etc and until you can track down what it is when you get to Budapest which is the second to last stop you you can make guesses on these telegram cards and these guesses if you're correct or if there's a tie it will be plus one point and if you're wrong minus one point if there is so you can send this telegram this will go underneath the board where nobody can see but you now, at certain points in the game, you'll be looking at these time cards. And these time cards will signify what time of day it is. And there's three of each time. So this is 615, there's three 615s. But remember, one will be under the board. So there will only be two of the card instead of the normal three that you're looking for. So there's three times in the game where you get to look at the time deck. And the first one, the player will just flip them over in a better stack than that as quickly or as slowly as he wants and you just have to kind of look at them in the second stop in the second stop each player will get an equal number of cards you get to look at your cards until the first player says stop flip them over and you change them to the other guy and then he can look at the cards you looked at and oh, until the first player says stop and once he says stop you can't look at him anymore and that will go around the board so everybody will get to look at each stack one time but the first player is in control of that the third one is is that there will be three stacks of cards and just kind of set them down like this and you and the first player will be divvying them out and you can look at them as they go keep in mind there's three of each time except for the one that is correct and there's only two so this one can be rather tricky this is probably the trickiest thing to see because you get to see the cards the least and it's kind of hard now in this game it's important to note that you're probably not going to get all five possible things that's that's a lot in this game i see a lot of people with three or four if you're able to get all five congratulations you're, you're incredible or had a really good game uh, the components are really good the game flows really easily but it does take a round or two to kind of get the hang of this especially if you've been playing Clue, which is quite a bit simpler than this. This game isn't really that difficult, but you're you're not really used to not being able to get all the information. This one, you want to get a little bit of the information, or as much as possible, but you may not be able to get all of it and still win the game. Who should buy this one? I'm going to say this is for anybody that's a fan of Clue, any family who wants a whodunit, but you're going to need a little bit older, so let's step up from Clue. And anybody who just wants a game, we're going to be figuring these things out. Maybe fans of Ticket to Ride who want to look inside the train and see what's going on. That can be really fun. But to me, so far, of the games I've played, and feel free to comment below, but this is the whodunit game. This is it. And you can play with quite a few players in this one, and you can just have a blast. And it's funny because everybody has cards. Everybody has the same amount of time, i.e. time they can spend on actions. 
But what do you do with your time makes a difference. And once you make a decision that's different than somebody else, you're either gaining an advantage or you're giving them an advantage based on what information you find. You may make the perfect move. But if you don't get any new information, you've wasted some time. And that's going to happen in this game where you waste some time. So you got to, and you will just be like, ah, I knew they were going to show me that card. Why did I do that? Um, so it has those moments where you just get really excited about it. I'm going to say most gamers are going to want to get into this game. They're going to play this game. It's a little bit older of a game. It may be a little bit harder to find, maybe a little bit more expensive. I don't know how much it's going for. But this is a game that's well worth tracking down. I highly recommend this. I tell you to keep this one in your collection. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's a keeper. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing games.